Hi guys, welcome to ScreenPrintingArtist.com. I want you to check out this video. We've got a really interesting technique here where you can utilize the new artistic styles in CorelDRAW to create an image that looks really crafted, um, but you're doing it really fast with clip art. So check it out, subscribe, um, invite people, feel free to share it. So I hope you enjoy it and let me know what you think. Let's kick it off here. Um, don't forget to subscribe and check out ScreenPrintingArtist.com. In this tutorial, I just really want to, I'm going to try to hit high gear here. I don't know if I've had enough Mountain Dew, but we'll, we'll give it a shot. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to try to get a somewhat of a higher end design done as fast as we can that's a little bit rendered and I'm going to try within the scope of this video to also separate it at high speed. So I'm going to develop this. Now if you're a beginner at CorelDRAW, some of my other videos are going to be a little bit of a different pace than this one. So hopefully this one, if, if it leaves you behind a little bit, you can always pause it and that sort of thing. But uh, the whole point of this is to try to get as fast artwork done as fast as I can. And I'll try to call out the commands as I go. Um, and I apologize, you know, some of the some of you are asking me to slow down, and it's it's a challenge on a regular day. But I'm going to try to actually ramp it up here a little bit. So, give me your feedback on this because if this isn't something that you like, then yeah, I want to know that too. So, um, I'm going to go ahead. So, Control I import. So I'm going to import, and then I'm going to go to my desktop. I got to find the right file folder. So once I found it once, Corel automatically go back to it. I created this file folder and I pulled this art from uh, freepick.com. So I'm going to try to do the right at attribution in the video contents so that uh, these are all covered. But these are this is a just clip art that I got off of that site. So I'm going to use that clip art to create this image relatively quickly. And I'm also going to use some, some styles in CorelDRAW and a different way of working in CorelDRAW. Then I'm not going to stay 100% with vectors in CorelDRAW just to get a higher speed. Now in this case, a couple things I want to say ahead of time. When you get um, vector art that's produced in, in say FreePick or some other the Adobe stock or different things, very often the, art, the, the clip art is done in um, Illustrator and there is an advantage to having a copy of Illustrator sometimes to open that clip art and the, the rationale here is I'll show you is you know if I import this clip art as it was original you'll see it you see all this extra stuff on here I don't want the tattoo guns and this like weird looking knife at the bottom and some of these other pieces and I want to put a new pattern behind this guy but if I pulled this in as an EPS right out of the file, I'm going to go ahead and undo my import. Um, I wasn't able to edit it as quickly. When I pulled it into Illustrator, the advantage there, since it was made in Illustrator, I was able to access the layers. And then I could modify the file, and then I saved it as an Illustrator EPS after it was modified. And then I was able to actually conserve the um, layers and delete some of this stuff. So now I was able to see this was on a layer now, and I can delete it. So there is sometimes a mode in CorelDRAW where you can actually access the layers in Illustrator, depending on how you import it. Um, and feel free to, to give me more information on that if you have some information I'm not sharing here. But uh, typically, there's a little bit of a challenge if it's saved from Illustrator in as an EPS, and then you don't import it into Illustrator again to access the layers. Sometimes Corel can't interpret the layers correctly. So that there's an advantage there from a clip art standpoint because you can see like these are these are still on a layer and when I originally tried to import it from Illustrator that wasn't the case. In any event I'm gonna go ahead and group these together. You can see they're all on different multiple layers. Um, you can see that in the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and group them together. I'm gonna try to make a samurai kind of Bushido design. Um, I'm gonna try to do it as quick as I can here to try to get some rendering and I'm going to try to make it not look like a vector image and a little more rendered so that's the goal anyways um, so I'm going to pull this element in first and you can see I kind of have all the pieces here the next element I'm going to pull in I hit control I again I pulled in this background here but I just wanted the background I didn't want the fish so it was the same thing I edited it just by combining or pulling out layers in Illustrator that way I was able to easily so rather than having to pull every little piece apart, here, let me zoom out so you can see this. I just wanted this background because I really like this background versus the one that was in the original clip art. It has more of a little tribal Japanese feel to it, which I really liked. So, you know, sometimes you want to combine elements in clip art and you can kind of, after you've worked with clip art a while, um, you can kind of 
figure out or just visualize what's working and what isn't. So I'm going to group these and then I can just kind of shrink them here and move them off. I'm going to see if there's, looks like there's a circle in the middle. Yeah, I want to delete that. So hold the control key down to access within a group and I can delete it. Um, and then here, what I can do is I can just, since these are grouped, I can just kind of select them both and I just hit the P key and I'll center them both. I'm going to move this one shift page up it should advance it ahead, but you know what? We might be on different layers. So sometimes if it's on different layers, you see how it says selected across multiple groups? All I do is select all, control A, and then I hit control G and I group everything. It forces it all the object on one layer. Because when you're grouping it, it forces it together. And then you can ungroup it and it'll stay, it'll stay on that layer. And then before I get too far, control shift S, I'm gonna save the file. I'll hit just SAM1, I guess, just for a quick name. And now I should be able to control shift page up, and you see how it goes ahead of that that uh, pattern that we had. And I want to size it correctly, so I don't want the pattern quite this big. I want it to be about the same size as it was previously. And you'll notice there's a little clip here. It's probably where the, the and this is me just being nitpicky, but that's probably where the pattern was actually formed together. And so that variation, I want to hide that. So I'm going to click, I'm going to rotate that, and I'm going to make sure that little weird variation is, is tucked behind something so that the rest of the pattern is pretty standard. You know, so there's that one little area where it's not little asymmetrical and I don't want that hanging out and annoying me so I, I just kind of there and then again you can center it click click and then hit the C key if it's symmetrical I'll center it um, and now what I'm going to do I'm going to control S to save I want to convert this to um, like a grayscale so what I'm going to do I could since there's a lot of parts in this there's all these groups if I convert it to a grayscale as a as a vector, I may have some conflicts with the color palettes working correctly and different things. Um, it's possible to do it, but instead of doing it the tricky way, I'm going to go ahead and do something which most people don't like to do, but I'm going to do it in this case, which is I'm going to convert it to a bitmap. So I'm taking my vectors, um, and, and one of the things you can do too is you can save the file, Control shift s save it, and you can just put as a working file here, and I'll save it, and then I'll Control shift s again, as soon as it's done saving, I'll just control shift S again, and then I'll put uh, working one. And that way I have the original without being converted to a bitmap as save file, and then I've converted it to this working one, which I'm actually going to go ahead and, because once you convert it to a bitmap, it's a lot harder to edit. You have to kind of bring it into, you know, Corel Paint, um, photo, you know, photo Paint, or you have to bring it into Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert it to a grayscale bitmap. I'm going to leave it at 300 dpi, even though it's a little bit small here. Let me see what size we got. Four and three quarters. Maybe I'll blow this whole thing up to actual working size, just so that we have. I don't want to go too big though, because I want my special effects to be maybe if I about half size. I'm going to go just roughly about half size here. Um, leave it right about six inches. That way, my effects in Corel Draw are going to be a little more dramatic. If I have it too big, sometimes the effects start to map as a pattern or something and they don't work quite as well. I'm going to shrink this just a hair down so it doesn't stand out as much. I'm going to click this. I'm going to go bitmap. So I'm going to convert to bitmap. 300 dpi at grayscale. I'm going to take tra um, leave transparent background on. I'm going to say OK. And then you see I converted this image to a, a grayscale. But one thing you'll notice when I converted it to grayscale, it kind of flattened out all my values here. So if I undo it, See how there was a some, some lot more value, rich value changes here with the colors? And then when I change it, so what I want to do, I'm going to click it again. I'm going to hit FX, um, adjust, and then tone curve. And I'm going to add in some value. Um, this is a preset curve that I use for something else. I'm going to reset. So what I want to do is I really want to kind of up my darkness here. See how it's getting plenty dark? And that's going to that's gonna really make this a little more dramatic. I don't want to go too dark, but I really want it to be kind of deep there. See that? And then I'm going to say OK. And then my background here, I think I'm going to, I'll just make it dark as well. Let me see what this says. Gray is 14. So it's still not even 100% gray, or 100% dark, I mean. So I can take this and I can get a reference point. Wait, I was on the bitmap. Let me click here. See that's the RGB. I'm going to click this. I'm going to use the grayscale model. So I'll use the model grayscale, and then I'm going to pull it all the way down. 
So now in, as grayscale, it's going to read G1. You can see the gray isn't totally 100% dark here. So I can hit it again, click here. I'm going to go effects, adjust, then tone curve. It'll probably push it again um, even darker. But you can see on this one, so what, what happened here, I'm going to reset. What happened here is I'm going to actually going to pull this over and you can see where the black point is, where it's 100% dark. And then at that point, I can bring my midpoint up a little bit, but not quite all the way, because I want to so I want to have the darks at 100%, but I want a lot of this other stuff to be you know, a little bit darker anyways. So I'm going to say OK. And then this background here, um, oh, I can't get to it because of the bitmaps over it. So you can always hold the control key and kind of flip it off, almost like you're turning a page. And then you can click here, and you can see the fill here. What I want to do, I'm going to convert this to grayscale as well. So I'm just going to change the color model to grayscale. It'll give me a gray, but I'm, I want to go darker. I want this to be kind of brooding and dark on the shirt. So now it's a gray, now everything's in grayscale mode. Um, I may even go darker than that because I want it to be pretty subtle on the shirt, almost like a charcoal. There. And then I've got this. I'm going to flip it back over. I'm going to save the file, Control S. Remember, we don't, the, the underneath piece is a vector, but the top piece here. Now, I want to have a shadow between this and the background. Um, so I kind of want to have a shadow cutting around here. So what I'm going to do is, okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, the quick way to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to create a drop shadow in between the two. So I'm going to click this, Control C, Control V. You could also duplicate it, although my duplicates and clones are off a little bit so I can turn those to zero just in case I want to duplicate it later but I have an extra piece now as you can see what I'm going to do with that effects um, adjust tone curve and I'm going to have to reset it and then what I'll do is I'll just make the whole thing black like really black boom I'll say okay and now I'll trace it trace outline trace detail logo so I'm going to use the trace because I want to create It'll take a little bit to trace it, probably, because it's 300 DPI, but I just want to make sure I get the majority of the pieces here. Looks like it's okay. I'm going to say okay. And then I've got this curve. And now, curve, I'm going to flip the curve off so I can delete the bitmap. I'll just say delete. Then I'll flip the curve back. And then what I want to do is I'm going to go here, click, I hit shadow. I'm just going to drag it a little bit because I don't want to necessarily skew it. I'll leave it on multiply. We'll go up to like. 85-ish um, here and then you can kind of see how it darkened it up a little bit right you see I think you can kind of see that let me zoom in a little bit and you can see where it darkened it up around the edges of this now it might be that because it's a complicated border you need to go a lot tighter so you need to go like six there and if you don't see a strong effect, what you can do is you can change where it goes. So you say outside. And now see it makes it considerably darker. And I can also go, you know, we can go all the way up to 90 if we want. And say OK. And then 6 kind of wraps it a little closer. Um, and so one of the things you can do here at this point is you can control K, break it apart. So then you got two objects. You don't really need the curve anymore because you got this darkness. And I'm going to flip this over, off, then you can click here, shift page up, and then you can click here. And you see how this isn't solid 100%? Well, what you can do, because it's semi-transparent, I'm going to hold the control key, pop it underneath. See, so see how it kind of did that? But now, I can hit the shadow, and I can just hit control delete, and then I add it. And you can see how that adds, it basically doubled the shadow, so it made it a little thicker, which is what I want, because I want to really want to push this out a little bit, away from it, and then kind of leave it on, leave it below. I'm going to hit Control S, save it, and now I need one, uh, two more elements, so I'm going to Control I, I'm going to bring them in, I want this, Bushido typography, or calligraphy, I'm sorry, uh, and then I want the samurai sword, so I'm going to bring that in. So what I'm going to do, this obviously is relatively simple. We can just trace it. Probably even quick trace will do it. Yep, that worked pretty quick, so I'm going to drag that off. I can get rid of the original, delete, and then here I can just ungroup it, and then this part, the background white, I can just get rid of, delete. And one of the things you can do here, I can group it, drag it on higher, and I can see if there's any white. Well, there's a little piece here, but I may 
I'm going to ungroup it and I'm going to hit control L. And then now it should be, yep, it's all one piece. So I'm going to put it on top here and I'm just going to hit a really dark gray. And that's my Bushido calligraphy right here. And then I'm going to go back to the samurai sword. Now for this, in the case of the samurai sword, I don't want the scabbard, but I want the sword itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace this. But a lot of times what I'll do, if I don't want to trace everything, what I'll do is I'll just kind of create a little power clip here, just so I don't have to spend the computer's energy tracing something that I don't want traced. And so you just take this, and then object, power clip, place inside frame, and just pop it in here. And then you take this, and you can bitmap, convert to bitmap. And in this case, we'll just do gray 300% or 30 DPI. And so now I've got a grayscale image here. And what I can do now, zoom in a little bit. Now I can, you can see how that cleaned it up a lot. Um, now I can trace this bitmap. Um, go outline trace detailed logo. And we can zoom in a little bit just to see. Um, what I'll do is I'll just use my mouse roll to roll in because I want to see how much of this I can capture to some degree. And it's going to tell me the time elapsed. So it's got about 10 seconds left. This is a nice feature in the trace. See, because in former versions, you wouldn't know if you were stuck or not. You know, you'd be sitting there waiting, hoping the trace is this going to work. Is it locked up? What's going on? Um, sometimes you don't know, right? And so, see, you can see here, and I, I lost a little bunch of detail. So, what I want to do there is I want to take the detail up, right? up pretty far because I want to maintain as much of that as I can for the special effect and the imagery and so it's going to work a little bit you can see it's progressing right here so it's going to rescan it so there now I kept a lot more of the detail here and and it looks good so I'm going to go ahead and say okay and then it converted it and now what I'm going to do here it's a pretty nice conversion it still even has a bit of a leather look which is kind of cool um, so I'm going to move this off I'm going to delete this underneath um, JPEG and you'll notice that you can see the cut lines kind of coming through a little bit more. But what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to ungroup it, ungroup, and then I'm going to get rid of this white. So I delete that, and then I want to get rid of this drop shadow that's around the sword because obviously you don't need that because we want just the shadow here. There's a little piece there, and since this is a pretty clean, at least relatively clean. Uh, clip art and you can always go into wireframe mode too if you want to see like is this something I can get rid of without damaging the clip art sometimes you don't know see that obviously is a piece I couldn't get rid of and then you can leave you can leave some of it and one thing I'll do sometimes if I do have pieces that I want to trim a little bit or I want to clean up with a trace first I'm gonna go to wireframe mode and make sure there's no extra pieces and then I'll go, that was Alt V W, now I'll go Alt V E to go back. And then I'll group this. So I hit Control G. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to clean it up just real quick. Because you can see there's how there's a little bit of that shadow in there. So I'm just going to take a freehand tool. I'm going to click here right on the edge of the sword. And I'm just going to double click, double click, and double click there and I'm going to use this shape and I'm going to click on that and I'm going to trim it and so you just get rid of stuff like that that's kind of out you know and I did yeah there's a little bump here but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it and then one of the things you can do here um, since there's you know 855 pieces is a lot of pieces so I don't um, I do want it to be distinct but you know you could simplify it at some point by combining pieces or doing different things, but for right now I'm gonna I'm just gonna stick with this, and I, I believe that Corel's more more than powerful enough to really kind of handle that. So I'm gonna kind of dive in here, and I'm gonna bring this in now into my image. I'm gonna bring it down a little bit here. Now you may want actually to have it facing the other way, so I'm gonna rotate it. I'll rotate it this way, and then can have it, you know, some degree it'll be like this. And you may want to look at the lighting, you know, even though it's clip art on top, 
there's still generally there's a directional lighting to it so you want to make sure it matches with this if it doesn't match because in this case it does look like the there's light on the top edge of the samurai sword and not on the bottom so with that being a consideration it might be better to have it the other direction we'll just take a look and see if it looks better it kind of does so I'll just leave it this way what I mean by that you'll see the highlights in the sword so it's like so maybe it needs to be this way if that makes sense so it'll be like that and then you just grab it flip it and right click on your mouse drag this over you get two cross swords I'll have it a lot of a little bit farther click this group them and then you can center click this and then hit the C key and it'll center and then these two swords um, like I said I can group them and then I can shift the page down so now they're behind everything and then control page up and now it should be and I'll hit control page up one more time but it still should be behind and then so then if I pivot it's gonna see how it's gonna fall under those shadows which is what I want I want it to, I want the shadows going across to some degree going across the sword blades so and I can also shrink this a little bit so it'll fit within the, design, the scope of the design so then I can get that shadows going, which gives it a little more dimension, makes it. Um, and then we can get the Bushido code on the side here. I don't know if we want to be redundant, but in the effort of just continuity, I'm going to go ahead and throw that on the other side. I could also grab Samurai from the or something, but I think we'll just stay with Bushido on both sides. And now we're going to add some special effects to this and some lettering, and we can wrap it. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit Control save or Control s I should say, and then what I'll do here is I'm going to put some of these effects on here. So in this case, what I want to do is I'm going to use an artifact on this top bitmap. And again, I want to save it. With the nice thing about Corel 2021 is these effects can be non-destructive, so you don't have to... They aren't permanently applied until you merge them on purpose, so intentionally. So if I go to Effects here, I can do bitmap effects, and they have some pretty cool ones. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna hit arts. Uh, look at. Um, I think I'll go down to creative. Um, so you can hit the art style palette, and it'll bring up the art style palette, which will allow you to apply some of these different art styles if you want. Now there's a, there's a bunch of different ones here that you can play with. Um, in this case, though, what I think I might do instead of applying art style I might try to apply more of a stone look so those are different options you can apply quickly but I think what I'll do here is I'm gonna try texture first and then let's see we'll, we'll try a plastic a plastic uh, application here and what you can do is you can kind of minimize you can take the highlight down a little bit and you can really play with this a lot to give your work on your dimension a little bit more um, you can work on the depth so it's not as dramatic if you don't want it to be. Um, you know, you can give it a little bit of dimension, or you can give it a lot of dimension. So if I go way up, it really makes it uh, almost surreal in some ways. But uh, it's, it's a nice way to, it finds all the contrasts and it adds this effect to it. And if you want to smooth it out even more, this would make it a little bit less harsh. So you can kind of see, and you can play with it a little bit to get a look that you kind of like here. I'm going to say, okay, and I can also control the light. So once I know the lighting, I kind of want the light coming down. It, and it's actually not bad right now because I, I have it kind of pointed downwards. I'm just going to say, okay. And then I'm going to add additional effects to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit effects again. And this is still selected. So I hit effects again. I'm going to go down to texture. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, stone and a st what stone is going to do you see that texture that it's going to do um, that's the detail of the texture now the roughness is, is pretty high so I can take the roughness down if I want and you can see I'm going to go ahead and roll in here so you can kind of see how it applies you see that texture I applied so I'm going to go ahead and go up even more to roughness the full 100% here's detail and I can bring detail down if I want you can see what that does. So it's a little bit less texture, or I can go up even a little bit more. And again, you can invert the light if you want, um, and that sort of thing. But I wanted to add. 
this texture to it to make it look a little bit more, have a grit to it, that sort of thing. I'm going to say OK. And then the last texture I'm going to try on here, still selected, you can see grayscale. I'm going to go effects, I'll go texture again, and then let's try cobblestone. And what this will do is it's going to add, see it's going to add little slices to it. It's almost like a distress filter. Um, you know, and, and you can increase the size if you want, like that. Or you can lower it. And so you can kind of see you put a few more cracks in there, a few less. I'm going to go a little bit bigger. And you can see there's, there's, it's literally like there's grout in between a little bit. But in this design, though, um, so you can either lower or increase the width between them. Um, and it gives little little slices and whatnot that uh, you know kind of puts the effect on top and from from a distance. Kind of see what that looks like. It gives it kind of that rough or that gruff effect. And then what I'm gonna do this, I'm going to use the same texture here, and I'm going to go ahead and just move this off. Right? I can just take it here and flip it, and you can see it maintains the textures that have affected it, and then it just flips it off. And then this, I'm just going to get this out of the way, just like a playing card, I just move it out, and then I click this one, I'll just move this one out. And so that's my drop shadow. And now what I can do is I can do some effects to this other the other pieces here, just relatively quickly. So I'm going to take, I may not be able to hit this one. I'll have to see. Yeah, I can get it. Okay. And so here, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a move uh, technique first. I'm going to hit effects and then I want to hit bevel. And so I just want to see what it's going to look like here. Um, let's hit apply and see. So they give me a little bevel there. And then here. Have a little bevel here, and then click this. Now this might not allow me to bevel because it's a group, so I may need to combine it. So I'm going to ungroup it, and then I'm going to hit Control L and combine it. And now I can bevel it as well. And it'll take a little bit, but it'll find it. So I beveled it. And the nice thing about that is it creates the same sort of bevel. Now what I want to do here, I'm going to um, break apart my bevel so that the net that is now is just a bitmap that's on top. See, it just referenced it and created a bitmap. It's a CMYK bitmap, so I want to make sure I'll make my bitmap. Um, I'm going to convert it to grayscale. I want to make sure I leave the transparency there. Convert it, and I want a little bit more drama, so I'm going to effects, just tone curve, do that. Because I want, I'm going to hit reset. And then, because I want, I want to darken up the shadow on the bevel and the drama on the highlight. So just make it a little bit more of a dramatic bevel. So what I can do is just push the push it over here and then I can push this over there. So I can just create a little bit more um, and I can say OK. Now I'll do the same thing here and here. So this I control K, this one, control K, and then both of them, same sort of thing. It's gonna break it apart. Hopefully it won't lock up. Yep, we're good. I'm going to hit Control S, save it. It's always a good idea. And then click here. And again, bitmaps, convert to bitmap. I want it to be grayscale. And then we'll effects. Whoops. I'm going to hit cancel there. Undo. I'm going to hit here. Let's hit effects. And I'm going to say um, just tone curve. It's going to save the last tone curve. And I might as well apply that there. Say OK. And then here. Same sort of thing, bitmap, convert to bitmap, grayscale, yes, and then effects, just tone curve here. And I'll say OK. And so now we've made a bevel and we've added tone curve here. But we want to add a couple of those effects that we did before. I'm not going to add the plastic, but I want to add, you know, I want to do the texture here. We're going to do stone. We'll do the same stone texture. And you can see how that roughs it up, which is kind of a nice look. So effects, texture, stone and apply that, and then the same thing here. Effects, texture, stone. It's going to roughen that up, which is real nice. And then we'll also add the, I'm going to see what it looks like with the effects um, texture, and we'll add the, the cobblestone 
to it, which will just break it a little bit. It just creates those little effects, almost like a distress filter texture. I add cobblestone to this. I'm going to say OK. And then same thing here. Effects, texture, and cobblestone. And say OK. And so then you see we got some nice kind of antique look to it. Now, I'm also going to do the same thing here. Now these swords, because you don't want the swords looking too real, right? Otherwise they're going to be weird. So let me see if I can add these as a group. I may not be able to add them as a group. I might have to, if I add stone to them, maybe it'll still apply. Oh, it did. Okay. So there, one thing you can see, it really flattened them both out. So I'm going to go effects, adjust, tone curve. And this, this is overkill with the tone curve. So what I wanted to really do here was just kind of darken them a little bit. Looks like it's not really working all that well, but, and then I'll darken the black up here. One thing we may have to do, let me go ahead and cancel this, just so that we, you know, undo my stone. And what I'll do here, I think, is I'll take the group of two, the two of them, and I'll ungroup them. And then this is a group of 855 objects. And what we'll do is we'll go bitmap, convert to bitmap. We'll convert them to grayscale first. I think that's going to really help. Um, same thing here. Um, to give me the same sort of look. And then now when I edit them, I think, um, and I can probably combine them. Then when I edit them, now there's a high probability I'm going to get much more of a consistent render. Yeah, there we go. And then effects, um, adjust, I'll get tone curve. If I want to darken them just a little bit, see that was overkill obviously, but now I can really get kind of a, or at least a little bit of a um, consistent handle on that. And then I'll also add the um, cobblestone to those to get the little cracks in them. Makes them look more uh, like a sculpture, or like some sort of stone wall kind of thing. Um, and then this, we can flip back in place. This we can flip back in place. And then this piece we can flip back here. And you can see, and we can always move these down too, um, if they get too dark with the with the shadow. But I like them with the um, with a little bit of that shadow on there. One thing is too, if there's not enough contrast, we could always add a little bit of a glow or something there. But I think it's coming along pretty well. Now I just want to add some some type to the top and wrap it up. So Control S, and then what we'll do is. Uh, We'll do Bushido. Hopefully, I can spell it right. B U S H I D O. There. I'm going to hit save. And we're going to use, let's see, we'll use a font that is, um, has a little bit of more character to it. Right here. Font, you can get off the font. Defont.com, I believe. Um, but you can. You know, and in some degree, what I like to do here is I'll hit Control K, break it apart, and then I'll take the first and second letters and I'll drag them down a little bit, and that just gives the whole font a little bit more character. And then you can kind of Control um, Q, convert them all to curves, and then Control L, combine them all. And so now it's one piece, and it's not a font anymore. So we can edit it a little bit more aggressively, and then let me zoom in here. And what we'll do is we'll kind of single arc this using the envelope mode, envelope, single arc, hold the control key to arc it this way, like that, and then you can drag it down here. Um, I'll drag it a little bit longer, because I think it'll look better. Um, and you can go, you know, you could go either more shallow or even a little bit wider. If one cent, you know, sometimes you can check too, if you like got one end that's a lot longer than the other. This is 
it's fairly consistent, but visually we've got a little bit lower with the B, so you can angle it down a little bit to compensate if you want it to look balanced. Um, and then what I'll do here for this design is um, I want to give a little dimension to it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually gonna do an extrusion just so I can see it while it's on the black. I'll just put a slight shadow on there. I hit Control S because anytime you do an extrusion or anything, and you're uh, there's a chance it could you know lock things up. So I want to make sure I fix that. Now I'll go down here to extrude, and I just drag it. I'm not initially gonna try to um, achieve a finished extrusion with this but I am going to hold the control key to constrain it to the center see I can't slide off center and I'll go down like this I'll let go it's going to start to convert it with the extrusion but it's a little big so I need to pull up the extrusion dialog so I'll hit extrude and this will allow me to kind of drop the depth down to about seven so it's not that far off. I may go a little farther. I'll go, let's go 12. That's a little farther. Mm, that's, yeah, right in between. So let's go 9. Hit enter. There we go. And what I'm going to do here again is I'm going to ungroup it. And then I'm going to click here. And I'm going to see what it looks like in uh, Control K break it apart. Well, I got to be on the extrusion, so control K now. And now my extrusion is one piece and then my top layer is another piece. And what you can do here now is we can fill it with the background black, but I'm going to here and I'm going to do real quick I'm going to do a um an effect contour. I'll do an inside contour of really small, so probably like a 2 0.02 or something. And I'll hit apply. And so give me a really kind of fine, you know, and I'll hit control K, break that apart. And then you can, uh, you know, we can use a deeper red probably. But I may want to fade that, you know, just to give it a, just to give it an effect. But uh, I may not want to use color in the image. I don't know yet, but I may, I think it kind of looks cool. So, um, you know, I don't know that I need the outline, but. Uh, what you could do in this in this case that that might look really cool is to have you know have some lines in there or something so um, one way to do that would be to you know just kind of create a line here um, I'll fill it no outlines and then I'll go here and I'll go up about there and I'll expand it like this just a little bigger and then you can create a blend and accelerate it so click here blend and then you click here and then you go here and obviously we don't need 50 so we need maybe four steps or you know something along those lines maybe we'll do 10 uh, or 8 something along that and what you can do is you can actually modify your blend by both moving this up and then shrinking it a little bit. And you can see how that kind of creates that. And then once you have that done, you can ungroup it. Um, Control K. And then you can just group it again. And then what you can do is you can apply a similar envelope to it here. And then we'll arch it. So it's real similar to the Bushido arch that we've already done. And then you can bring it down there. And so when you're when you're arced and you're it looks like it's touching, so I can go a little lower on this side. Just so it's mapped correctly. Both pieces. So you can see it's on the bottom of everything. And then I'll go up just so it's clearly in the image, the whole dimension. So right there is probably about right. And then what I'll do is I'll object power clip, place inside frame, and we'll just go boom, and we'll place it inside there. Um, and then you can you could take this and you could make this white or you could make it, you know, probably to make it more subtle is you could make it um, you know like a kind of a grayish color here and then 
your outline actually I wasn't intending on that being white but I can make a a border that is um, black and then you can do an outline on both of these so this the intention here is that this will actually be um, you can see I can move it off this is remember that's our it's actually our fill but what we can do is we can take that fill and we can actually add um, an outline to it so you can take it and you go um, you know to just put scale with outline there um, I like to round them otherwise you sometimes get weird flares on the outline and then just make it a darker outline that thickens it up a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and pivot it off so I can see the underneath and this one you can see we have that 0.5 but I'm actually gonna go a little thicker and this will be where we can um, you know, we'll go up to like three and we'll round them just so, again so we don't get any weird flares and I'll say okay and then I'll go ahead and drag this to that and I'll say um, copy all properties whoops I'm gonna copy to the group so I'm gonna click here and go copy fill outline to group and then what I'm gonna do here instead of three I'm gonna go to five and I'm going to go scale with image and behind. And I'll go OK. And then what I'll do is I'll click here and I'll go Control D. And then I'll say no outline. And then that'll kick out my the little scrappy outlines that are in between. And then I can fold this back in on top. And so you can get a little bit of a feel of a you know that white might be too bright so you can always tone it down a little bit but you click here you can see it's got the three point but we can always you know like I said go a little duller with it or a little more gray same thing here if you click if I can get the right one I can go gray with it and grab it control group and then again we want to center it hit the C key and this whole group can shift page down and then control page up and then one more to get above the bottom texture and then I can nudge it this and then we can play additionally you could take it if you wanted to and you could finalize this so you can hit control S to save and then you can take this, you can convert it, bitmap, convert to bitmap, grayscale, yes. And then you could take that and you can apply. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try the plastic to it. I'll say okay, and then I'm gonna try like stone. And there is there's you can also drag this in the object uh, um, boxes as well you know if you bring up your dialog boxes you can you can copy and paste and drag effects I'm trimming these individually just so I have a little bit more management of them uh, as I do them but um, plus it's kind of fun to see how the, the individual pieces are kind of mapping onto this um, so you can get an idea there but uh, yeah and you could even go a little larger with this perhaps you know or a little smaller depending and you can kind of use the whole image as a guide here and just see how does it fit with the rest of this um, and then we can take our image I may want to tuck this down just a little bit just so it fits a little tighter with my image here that's pretty good and then here I'm going to go ahead and rotate this guy off so I rotated one of my shadows off. So you can see this shadow actually, I might shift or control page down and I'll go behind. See I'm going behind stuff there? It's ahead of the swords. I'll go behind the swords with the one one of these and then I can click this and I can shift control page up and I'll go in front of that so that the, the, the I split the shadows basically. I drop the shadow behind this and behind the swords and then I can tuck the swords up a little bit. I can shrink them a tiny bit more. They look a little big. And I can bring them up a little bit here. Um, 
save. And you've got a pretty good working design here. I grouped it and then I hit here, CE, center it, and then this, and I'll save it. And then to actually print this out um, for a t-shirt and actually separate it. Um, I'm going to show that now. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right into SEPs and then we'll call it a day on this video. But if you, uh, you know, sometimes people get intimidated because they're like, oh, I got bitmaps in my design. What do I do? You know, it's, it's tough. And it, it can be, you know, I mean, it can be intimidating in Corel to have bitmaps and different things. Um, in your design that you know are, are you're not used to using you can't easily you know just click on them and edit them obviously you know because if I go into wireframe mode here you just see a bunch of squares with your images you know most of its bitmaps are bitmaps on top of patterns and vectors so it's not it seems like it's a little bit more tricky to deal with but in reality it's actually not that bad when you have gray on a black garment to separate it so what you can do um, in this case I'm going to go ahead and show how to do this. So I'm going to save it and then I control shift S I'm going to hit a, and just make my SEPS file. So it's saving in the moment here. Control S. You can see down here. And I'll hit file. Um, save as. And then we'll go ahead and go, instead of working, I'll go SEPS. SEPS. Um, and get rid of my contour here. And what I want to do, I'll make a secondary page, and then my primary page. What I want to do is size this artwork now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a square. I'm gonna decide what size do I want this to be on the garment. So, looking at it here, on the very edge of the printing area with a square, and this square. I'll just make it orange just for reference, so we can see it. You look up here, and I hit Control Q. So it resets it to 100 and 100, and it's seven. Right now it's eight and a half inches tall, or nine inches tall, basically. So 8.9 by 7.1. And what I want to do is I'm going to switch this to full printing size, which will be um, the width is going to be primary thing. So I want it to be about 12 inches, which is going to be a big print. So it'll be a big print on the shirt, and it's about 15 long, which will still fit on an automatic press, but it's it's a big print. So that that's actually not a bad thing. Um, and then I'm going to make I'm going to edit my page size so that uh, I'll just double click on the page border here, and then I'll go ahead and make this into a standard film size for printout, 13 by 19. This is my film size. I'm going to say OK, and then I'm going to make the black of the background just it'll just fit the whole page, you know. And I can I can always just go in here, hit the unlock, and go, you know, 13 by. 19 because this is my background anyways and I'll hit the P key to center it on the page um, and this what you can do is when you click on this you see it's 168.8 percent to pull it up to the larger size so I know if I select everything here that was my image make sure it's grouped and I'll just go here make sure I hit the lock key and I'll go 168.8 and it's gonna hit that size automatically and I'm gonna hit save control s and now I save it. And so I've saved my design. And now I'm going to select all and copy it. And then I'm going to go to page two. I'm going to go ahead and actually I'm going to delete page two. Let's delete it. And then let's make another page here. Say insert page after. Um, one thing you can do too here is I want to say 13 by 19. I probably didn't click that button that says apply to this page only. I needed to uncheck that. And I'll say OK. And then I'll hit Control V, it pastes it in, and now I'm going to start to separate this. But what I'm going to do um, in this case to make it really simple is I'm just going to print a gray first, and I'm going to do a highlight white on top of the gray. And so it's actually a really easy separation to do. Um, so I'm going to show this, and I'm going to simulate it real quick on how you can actually even make sure that the steps are going to work. So um, in this case, I'll hit save. And this, my first one is my reference file. My second one is actually my first separation. So I'm going to make my first separation. Um, I need some crosshairs. So I'm going to see if I bring in some crosshairs here for my desktop. I think I have a crosshairs file. If I don't, um, it's possible. 
possible I don't. If I don't, then I can just make some. I don't see one. Um, let's just go ahead and make a crosshair real quick, just so that we have it. Because we got two. We're going to have two screens. I'll hold the control key. Just click this, and then I'm just going to click it again. I'm going to rotate it. Hold the control key. Right click, and then I'm going to use a little circle here. We're just making a quick cr um, crosshair, and then we'll see E, and then we'll group them, and then I'll come down here. This is just a good rule of thumb. I'll go ahead and make them, you know, just make them one point. And then I want the color. I'm going to hit CMYK. I'm going to go to registration color. That way it'll show up on any color, print, sep, or whatever. And I'll say OK. And so now I've got, you know, sep, uh, crosshair that I can use for my separation. And then I'll also, so this first plate's going to be white. And then the second plate, or I'm sorry, the first plate here is going to be gray. And then the second plate will be white. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control. Um, C and then I'll create one more page after and control V and then this page I'm going to convert this whole thing right now to uh, a bitmap because what I want to do is I'm going to grab everything here I'm going to say bitmap convert to bitmap make sure it's grayscale 300 dpi um, it doesn't have to be transparent at this point because I got a solid black background. So I'm going to go 70. Okay. You're not going to see a big change to this. Nothing's really going to happen. Um, and that's okay um, because we just converted the whole image that was grayscale, anyways, to a solid grayscale. So the difference is here. You'll see in wireframe if I undo it, Control Z. See, it went from that to this, essentially. Just combined everything. Um, let me hit Alt V E. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to invert it. Um, and this is going to be our gray plate. So I'm going to, um, there's a couple different ways of doing it. You can, um, I think you can, I think it's effects, adjust, I want to say it's invert color here. I don't know, see where the invert key is. It's around here somewhere. X. That's the thing about new versions, they move the tools around. And it takes me a minute to fix uh, object. One minute. It's here somewhere. You could, there's a couple different ways of doing it. Um, I think there's an invert command, though. So I'm looking for that. Transform invert colors. Here we go. Boom. And you can check it by um, you know using the eyedropper and you hover it over. If it's 255 that means it's 100% white. If it's you know gray it's going to be some portion of gray above all the way up to zero. Zero would be the darkest. You know that'd be the full black. So it doesn't look like there's a big print here but that's because it was a dark kind of a dark image to begin with. right? Um, so this is technically your gray plate right now. What I would probably do in this case is I would saturate it a little bit so it affects adjust curves. But before I do it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually echo this. I'm going to control C and you'll see why in a minute. I'm actually going to get rid of this. I'm going to delete and delete. I'm going to control V and then I'll go back and this and what I'm going to do here I'll go ahead and position my crosshairs. Make sure they're outside of the print where I can tape them off. So I'll go here. And I just drag it over and right click. And then I'll group them. And then I'll hit the page and hit C. So I center them. And then I'll grab here. And I'll drag them down just below the print again. Here and here. Oops, I might have moved them there. So I can hit here and here. And then I'll. Um, center them again and then group them and then hit the P key for you know centering them on page. One thing I do like to do um, is I'll grab one of the center points. Let me see if I can do that real quick here. I'll go click this, click, click, and I'll hit control C, control V, and then I will click this and then center that. And that gives me a center line. Um, which can be useful on a palette. Depends on the type of design. If you have a really symmetrical design, you might not need it, but um, I like to usually like to have a center line. So I bring it down here, and you can always group those. 
hit the P key to center them, and then combine them with your crosshairs. So they're all grouped together. So if you need to copy, paste, or delete your crosshairs, so I just delete them, and then I undid it. And then I'll put just a little reference. I'll use probably use separation one, and this will be gray under under base. Obviously, the font on that's a little big. You know, we got a 24 point. We probably need it at like not even 12, right? Like 11 or something. And you could always go here and just you know put it 11 point in here. Um, and it's a good idea. You know, this is registration color, so you put that registration color on it for your and then here and if any other information go there too and again I like to put it in line with these these uh, and I like to have the crossers down just enough that you can tape them all off in one shot so I made sure I do that and I got the one is the gray underbase and now I do want to tweak this gray underbase just a tiny bit um, I want to over I want to saturate it a little bit so I'm going to do adjust uh, tone curve and I'll hit reset I just want to pull that mid-tone a little bit darker. What that's doing is just putting more gray into the image. The value looks okay, but I just, you know, because you can always print a darker gray, but if you don't have enough density of ink underneath, then a lot of times you're, you're, you're stuck a little bit. And so I'll say, okay. So I'm just adding ink to the screen, in a sense. I did that. I'm going to save it. Um, Control S. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my crosshairs and this font here. So I'm going to grab that and my crosshairs. Control C. I'm going to go to page three. Control V. I'm going to click this. Control Shift T. And I'm going to go. This is separation two, and this is highlight white. So highlight white. That's okay. And now I'm going to edit this white by squeezing it back, and then just understanding effects just tone curve what I'm going to do is I just want to keep hit reset I just want to keep the very highlights of the white so I want to pull the black point back a lot and then I just want to keep um, here we can wait let me reset let me do it this way this is going to keep cutting it out too much you know it'll just dust white on top of the whitest areas and you can see there's a haze there's like a haze here so we can check that and it also shows the number of pixels here so it's like get my white totally outside of the range of where it's going to create that haze see I get total pixel count is fairly low for the rest of the image so that that's a good that's a good way to see if you're outside of that range of where it's a good fit so this is a might should be a good highlight white here um, again I'm estimating a little bit but we can check it and that's that's what I'm gonna do next but and then that's my highlight white and save and then this should print using these separations at this point you know onto the garment so the way to check it though to see if it's actually gonna work and this is going to sound a little weird, but I'm going to make one more file. So I'm going to page, and this is going to be just a digital proof. I'm going to hit Control S, save it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first file, um, and I'll just take this whole thing, and I'm going to uh, copy it. I'm going to go to the page four, and I'll paste it, Control V, and I'll convert the whole thing to a bitmap. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but what I like to do is I'll bump it up to 600 here. So I'm adding DPI. I'm going to say OK. And it makes a fairly big file, but what it'll do is at 600 dpi, it'll allow me to look at dots. So then I'll come back and I'll click here, and I'll go bitmap, and I'll go mode, and I'll go black and white, and then it's going to bring up the dialog there. And the dialog, I'm going to add halftone. And I'm going to leave, I'll put 22 degrees, because that would be a normal one. And then I'm going to have certain lines per inch, but it'll probably be like, you know, 55-ish or something. I might even go a little bit less. It might go 42 lines per inch. I don't want square. I'm going to go with round. And I'm going to say, okay. And it's going to convert it to dots. You can see that. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my uh, other file. But first, before I do that, I'm going to make, I'm going to take that background from the beginning. I click this. Make sure I just got the background group of one. It's kind of weird that it's a group, but 
I'll control C, go to the last page, and I'll go control V, and then I'll shift page down. And then here I'm going to click on this, and since it's a monochrome bitmap, I can hit nothing on the fill, and then I can right click on the, a dark gray. So this is my gray underbase. And then now I'm going to simulate my white highlight. So I'm going to grab all of this. I just can group it and then control C and then I'll go on top of it here and I go control V when it's all together I'll go bitmap convert to bitmap it's going to use the same settings 600 I'll say okay and then I'll go bitmap mode black and white and it should hold the same settings again half tone round 22 43 lines per inch yep I'll say half tone and I'll say okay and then now I'll go no fill and then I'll go highlight waves so I'll click on the white and so then you can see how the white is going to overlay and now it's not going to look that great because it's a simulation but you will see to some degree especially if you zoom in how the colors will stack now they will gain a little bit but I didn't, it doesn't look too bad here you do see what looks like to be a little bit of moray but if you zoom in it actually doesn't look too bad and, and it can give you a digital idea of what a gray underprint that's flashed and then with a white overprint would do and maybe you want to go with a higher die count and die count if you or dot count if you wanted to save some of the um, simulation but this gives you an idea of what this would print out at that line count which is you know maybe it's a little low for this design but you get the idea and so that's a digital print so I can save it you know if you didn't have a rip you could actually rip that and actually use those dots although a rip would produce better dots so I can delete that fourth page because it's a fairly big of a hog, uh, hog of memory and save this output this and if you felt like that simulation there well let me undo that actually if you felt like the simulation like you needed more white at that point you could go back and you could pull this original file you could duplicate it again and go back and just not squeeze it as much right and then test your simulation here again and with a little more white in here if you wanted to brighten it up or you know you didn't see a good value a transition or something but as it is it looks it looks pretty decent so I think I would I would stick with that um, might be a fun design also to use some sort of puff ink on or some sort of special effect or something but uh, in any event um, hopefully this gives you an idea how to construct a design using these special effect filters using bitmaps in CorelDRAW and then a quick separation set so a lot packed into one tutorial, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, let me know your feedback.